here. If you want to get notified when I publish new fishing reports uh, for different areas or just in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notifications icon. And also you can head over to my website, macrobertson.com, and you can subscribe uh, through email to get like individual areas or all fishing reports uh, in a certain area. Uh, so make sure to check that out. So uh, water temperature is, uh, I checked it this morning, is around 85 degrees. So that's peak water temperature uh, for this area. Um, so it's going to average about 83 degrees in August. Uh, so being 85, it just shows that we are maxed out for the season, for the year right now um, in, in the middle or beginning of August here. Um, so that, that brings kind of pros and cons. Um, so some of the good things is that uh, certain fish that aren't native to the area, like let's say tarpon, are going to start to show up here and there. Uh, chasing bait balls through the surf or maybe in some inlets, um, certain areas like that, maybe some grass flats. Uh, and then uh, fish like Spanish mackerel may come a little bit closer to shore uh, chasing those bait balls again. Um, so we're going to step through each, each fish here in a second. Um, but those are some good things with the high temperatures. Some bad things uh, is that a lot of the native fish like red drum, black drum, flounder, trout, all these fish are going to really slow down and become a lot more sluggish throughout the middle part of the day when it's the hottest. So if it's getting up into the 90 degrees, 95 degrees area, uh, water temperatures up at 85 or 83, then those fish are really going to slow down in the middle part of the day. So really all that means is that they're still biting. Uh, they're still there. Maybe move your baits a little bit slower during the middle part of the day. But really the key there is just to get out really, really early in the morning. So if you're out on the water or on the beach ready to surf fish when the sun's rising, then you're probably ahead of most of the anglers out there and you're going to catch a ton more fish than if you start at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. I can 100% say from experience that that is true this time of year. Um, so just an example, I, I uh, brought a buddy of mine, his son out who was 16 the other day. Um, and we, we knew that it was going to be cool for a few days. Uh, so in the high seventies, uh, for a few days, maybe a week and a half ago. And, uh, that second day is when we went out early in the morning and he's never really inshore fish at all, maybe throwing a line in here and there. And he, he ended up with a grand slam. So he got, um, a uh, really good sized trout, a huge flounder, and a little puppy drum. And it all happened within 30 minutes, uh, really, really early in the morning. So just a quick example there. Um, so let's see here. So uh, as far as what fish are biting, um, it's going to depend. Uh, there's going to be a lot of carryover with the different areas. So the marsh creeks, uh, in the inlets, and in the surf. Uh, but there are a few variations. So um, red drum, uh, this is Marsh Creek's first, red drum, black drum, trout, flounder, caught all of those uh, in the last week and a half or so, um, all early morning, um, maybe a few here and there later in the day. Uh, and again, you can go out at evening too. So like once it starts to cool down, but it's different than the morning because the morning you've had all night for the water to cool down. Whereas in the evening, it's just the temperatures are cooling down. That doesn't mean that the water has cooled down yet. So it's still going to take a little while for that water to cool down. Uh, and, you know, fish get hungry, but it's going to take a little while for them to get more active. Morning's totally different. Anyway, so the uh, red drum, black drum, trout, flounder, croaker, caught a zillion croaker, fed them back to a bunch of shark lately. <laughs> um, whiting, same thing. Um, uh, pinfish, I don't, I don't even know why that's on there, but... Uh, they're, they're there and <laughs> they're biting anything you put in front of them. Um, and then some smaller sharks. So, um, it's pretty much going to be the same thing out in the inlet. Um, the thing you might see out in the inlet are bigger sharks, some tarpon, um, possible Spanish mackerel, possible pompano, right? Um, and then heading out to the surf, you're going to lose a few things like, uh, you know, I rarely catch pinfish in the surf, um, which is a good thing. Uh, but you're going to get a lot more sharks, a lot more like small to mid-sized sharks. Uh, you're going to get more pompano, possible Spanish mackerel, possible tarpon. Um, so the thing in the surf you really want to look at, um, and this kind of goes into uh, more like where to fish, uh, is this time of year 
you're going to see lots of bait balls running through the surf. So one, I don't think you want to get really close to those because usually there's a bunch of sharks in there chasing whatever's in there. Um, even if other fish like bluefish or, um, and I don't know why bluefish isn't on the list. I got to add that on there. Um, but blues are definitely running right now. Um, so, uh, and that's going to be in the, in all three areas, there's going to be blues. So, um, but you, you really want to target those bait balls and that's, that's where I get a lot of my, uh, more prized fish and larger sharks in the surf is when those bait balls are coming by. And what I try to do is I, I do not try to get close to those, but if they're like really, really close to shore, then I'll try to throw a cast net into them and get a couple of the mullet, um, or if it's Menhaden, uh, also known as Bunker, that, that are in that school, then get some of those out and then try to keep them alive. And when the next bait ball comes by, then you throw into it with that bait that's already being chased. And whenever I'm able to do that, it's not the easiest thing to do, but whenever I'm able to do that, it's always a huge, just bam, almost immediately, um, I get a huge hit and it, usually it's a big fish. So, um, and, and so, uh, on this report, you're going to see a lot of the species break broken down here. Um, it's going to say a lot of coming soon. That's all about to change over the next few days. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish a video and like a little guide for each one of these fish, just to kind of say, this is how I catch them. Um, and this is how I catch them when I'm fishing in the creeks or the inlet or the surf. Sometimes it's the same for each one of those, but usually it's a little bit different for each one. And usually there's a couple options for each one, whether it's high tide or low tide. Uh, even if the rig itself isn't different, the way you would fish it and where you would fish it would be different. So um, check on the fishing report for those links uh, coming soon over the next few days. And also uh, I'll put in the description of this video links to each one of those so that you can uh, just, you know, if you, maybe you already know, awesome. Um, every single time, anything I think I know, if I watch enough videos and listen to enough guys uh, that I fish with, I always learn more and more. Um, so I'm constantly learning. I think everybody can constantly learn uh, little details, at least what's working right now in August, 2021, because sometimes it changes, right? Um, so uh, going down to the fishing spots and kind of getting back to that. Um, so if you're out on the beach, what you want to do is you want to try to find um, cuts coming out of the beach. So, um, these cuts could go all the way way. And, and really when I say cuts, it's kind of like a riptide, right? Um, so experienced surf fishermen, uh, and anglers, you're going to know how to do this. Uh, but a lot of people really just don't know this one basic step, which is to read the beach. So when you get out there, um, and it's going to change whether it's high tide or low tide, but you want to look at the beach, look left, look right. Um, hopefully it's early in the morning where not many people are out there, if any at all, and you can really get a good look at things. Um, and it, from my experience, it really doesn't matter if it's high tide or low tide. Some, some people have a lot more luck at low tide. I have a lot more luck at high tide or a rising tide coming into, uh, the beach where a lot of that bait's getting stirred up and then sucked back out into, uh, these cuts. So what you want to look for is, um, is you're going to see your crashing waves, your, your white water, like your ripples. And then somewhere along there, you're going to kind of see some spot that's not really crashing as hard or the waves aren't popping up as much. And it almost looks like a little whirlpool. Um, look at that spot. Usually there's going to be a little bit of mud getting turned up and you're going to see kind of an end to it. It's going to go out. Sometimes it goes way out. Usually not. Usually it just goes through one cut, maybe two cuts of, um, or two, two levels of waves. Uh, maybe you can call them breaks is probably the best term. So it's going to go through like one or two breaks of actual waves and you'll see the mud. You'll see it's kind of like uh, wide at the beginning, skinny, and then it widens out at the end. That's where you want to be fishing. So um, those will change with the tide. So if it comes in um, and, and covers that cut up, and then that cut may not be as productive as it was, or maybe a new one that you want to look for. Um, or maybe it's still there and you just need to fish into it. Um, a lot of time when the tide comes up, that's one of my favorite times to fish, especially for, um, drum and other fish that are going to come up, um, like Pompano will come up and start eating those sand fleas 
um, the little sand doodlers, uh, people call them different things. Um, but that, that water is going to come up as the tide comes up, it's going to start hitting the, the beach, kind of like the dune part of the beach. Um, and as we get deeper into fall, usually, uh, the beaches around Myrtle beach, the grand strand area, uh, you're going to get more of like a shelf when that tide comes in, it's going to hit it. And there's going to be a ton of sand fleas that come out and go into that first little cut and that dip. So you're going to see like a lot of tide pools and things like that when it's low tide. Well, right where those tide pools are, when it's high tide, you literally can just cast. You like put a sand flea on or whatever it may be, a little piece of shrimp, um, cut mullet, cut menhaden, uh, bunker, uh, whatever it may be, a little piece of crab. Throw it right into that first little cut. And a lot of times you'll be surprised at how big of a fish you can get there. Um, so that'll be discussed a lot more in uh, each individual species and like which bait and rigs and everything to use. But that's a great spot, um, especially going into the fall. It's not as productive for me during the summer, but in the fall, that's, that's pretty money. Um, in the inlet, um, you, you just want to, from, from my experience, uh, in the inlet, you want to look for structure. So if there's rocks and things like that. Um, in the Myrtle Beach area, there's there's really not a ton of inlets to, to fish unless you go down to Myrtle's Inlet or go up north to uh, Little River. Um, but uh, if, if you're fishing an inlet, one of those inlets or, or another one that I didn't mention, um, you know, look for the rocks, look for the structure. Uh, but really, uh, my best fishing in the inlets is, is when the tide is quickly moving in or out. And usually it's in for me. Um, so when that tide is starting to rip in right after the slack tide, so if it's, it's, uh, it's been, you know, low tide and then it's coming into high tide, that water's pouring back into, uh, the waterway, whether it be going to the marsh or intercoastal waterway, um, that's, that's when I usually have the best luck in an inlet. Um, so I'm just casting right out there, um, whatever I'm fishing for. Um, and then in the marsh and the creeks, uh, I think in general, um, the best, it's, it's tough to generalize the, the marsh, right? Um, so I got a little typo here. I see the marsh, um, but it's the marsh and, um, it's hard to generalize because different fish are going to be different spots at different tides and different currents. And it's, it's a complex little environment. Um, but in general, what I like to do is let's say for red drum, if the tide's high and has come in then I'm putting a weedless rig on and I'm fishing in the grass for those this time of year. Um, and that's going to happen more and more as we go into fall because you get bigger tides sometimes. So um, these big keen tides that come in. Um, and then if it's low tide, then I'm going to fish along the bank, especially uh, looking for oyster beds um, and just throwing up against the bank for them. Uh, if you can find a hole um, that you know, you kind of like if, as a, have established is there during low tide and you come back during high tide, sometimes they'll be there. Um, and then uh, when the tide is moving in the marsh, my favorite thing to do um, is just to look at like, where is this tide moving? So if it's going out and there's a, a bend going out this way, um, try to do it so you guys can see it. And that water is going and hitting that bend on the way out. Well, you know who's sitting there because all of the bait is getting sucked out and just pounded against that bank. And you're going to have some game fish that are sitting right there waiting for that to come out. Same thing if you have an island, let's say uh, here, and the tide is coming this way, it's hitting this island. Well, who do you think is going to be sitting right back here waiting for the tide to get sucked around and for them to hit it? So um, you kind of want to if it's let's say an outgoing tide hitting this island then you want to be sitting you want to be fishing really sitting up here fishing back into these spots knowing that there are predatory fish just sitting back there waiting for that bait to get sucked by the island um so just a few general tips there um as far as like flounder and stuff you know it, from high tide or low tide um, i'm going to fish pretty much the exact same way for them maybe just when it heats up i'm going to go uh, under docks and stuff rather than just fishing the channels. Um, but it's going to be the same thing, jigging live, live bait or putting it on a Carolina rig and, uh, bouncing it along. So 
Um, but I'll go through each one of those details, uh, like really, really detailed in each one of the individual species videos here. So anyways, guys, uh, if you have any questions at all, please ask them in the comments below. Um, if I haven't done a fishing report for your particular beach or area that you live in or that you're going to be visiting uh, in this general vicinity, let me know. I'm happy to do a quick report for you, um, and hopefully it would help you catch some more fish. And hopefully uh, you guys will subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.